What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you already expect, Call of Duty Next has happened. I want to go ahead and put together my first impressions. I watched about two to three hours of the overall reveal. I got enough information, you know, from what I needed. I didn't really need to go too much further. I saw multiplayer. I saw the new cutthroat game mode. I saw a little bit of Warzone. I saw the zombies, so on and so forth. And I wanted to go ahead and put forth my first initial impressions. Of course, I will have more detailed videos in the future, of course, as more information comes out. But for the time being, I just want to express my opinion about the game because obviously one of the main things I've been anticipating is the gameplay loop. You know, I wanted to see if the gameplay is going to be good or if it's going to be bad. And in their first initial multiplayer trailer they didn't showcase any gameplay you know they gave us a little snippet of what slide canceling kind of looked like but uh, we didn't really get to see you know what a full match of Modern Warfare 3 is going to look like if the movement has been improved if the gunplay has been improved or if everything is just staying the same or you know god if it got worse but after being able to see full matches you know hours worth of matches I can confidently come out and say that they have made some major improvements you know, I have to give Sledgehammer Games props. I really do, where props are due. And of course, uh, this might change. Things are always subject to change. And you never know when the beta comes out, which the beta is dropping today for PlayStation players. You know, they might change stuff around for that, or they might change stuff around for the second beta, which is going to be the open beta, or they might change stuff around for, you know, the, the full launch of the game. Who knows what is going to happen? But Sledgehammer Games came into the scene with a very simple motive of basically fixing everything that Infinity Ward screwed up and making sure they don't do any of the mistakes that Infinity Ward did. And so far, they are living up to their word. Now, of course, I do want to go ahead and put this at the very beginning of the video as a disclaimer, because God forbid if I hold this for the last part of the video, which I was planning to do, but as I was thinking of, you know, how I can go ahead and format this video, I was thinking, you know, if I save this to the last, I'm just going to get absolutely roasted like no tomorrow. So I'm going to say it right now. This game isn't worth $70 to $100. Yes, Sledgehammer has done many things, which I will be discussing very shortly, that are major improvements for the game. But like I said in my previous videos, doesn't matter what Sledgehammer does, Activision is holding them back. Between skill-based matchmaking, microtransactions, stores, the priorities of where you know all the fixes and you know content goes towards, everything that Activision does is going to hold back Sledgehammer. And the fact that they're pricing up this game seventy to one hundred dollars for basically DLC is still mind-boggling because that's all it is. Even after watching the gameplay, I can acknowledge it looks way better. But at the end of the day, this could have simply been an update in Modern Warfare Two. 1,010%. It's nothing that game-changing. But with that being said, let me actually get into critiquing the change that Sledgehammer has made. I'll be honest with you guys. Like I said, I watched a few hours of gameplay. And honestly, it might be a few other things that pop up when I can finally play it with my own hands. But from what I've noticed, I can't think of any other changes. You know, when Modern Warfare 2 dropped... It was a thousand and one things that people were coming up with that needed to be changed. Between the movement, the perks... The mini map, you know, uh, it's it's endless. It's actually endless. But right here, right now, when it comes to Modern Warfare Three, it's nothing. I, I I can't think of anything that really necessarily needs to be changed up. The perks are exactly what we wanted. The mini map is back to normal. You have dead silence as a perk now. The movement has been increased by tenfold. They have multiple different you know perks in the game that help your movement and attachments that help your movement. The gunplay looks extraordinarily crispy. The time to kill has been improved, so you know obviously gunfights last a bit longer, not having for these millisecond long gunfights where any old noob can pick up a gun and just melt you down with no skill whatsoever. You actually have to aim a bit more in this game. Honestly, I just can't think of anything that is devastating that has to be changed right now. Of course, if you guys can think of something that doesn't include skill-based matchmaking or anything that is Activision's problem, I'm talking about Sledgehammer Games specifically with what they fixed up in the game. If you can think of something that is negative right now, then go down in the comment section and leave it there, please. Because again, that's what this is all about. We're here to give feedback, critique, even though Call of Duty, when they have betas, they're just demos. So I guess the critique doesn't matter. But on this channel, we like to critique still. So if you know anything that's bad, let me know. But from my perspective, I was watching and like I said, I can't think of anything. I really do think the biggest components that are going to hold me back and a lot of others is the skill-based matchmaking. And maybe I'll hyper-focus on microtransactions. That's what I can see. But literally everything that we complained about has been resolved. It really has been. And funny enough, this might sound crazy. Of course, please... Go down in the comment section and let me know if you think this is true or not. But it looks like it took serious inspiration from X Defiant. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it didn't because this game has been in production for a little while. I, I, I can't tell. 
But it really does seem that X Defiant really had Call of Duty shivering in their boots. I might make another video about this, but seriously, between the graphics, the color palette, the, the look of the weapons, the way the weapons handle, everything just gives me major X Defiant vibes. The movement, all of the above. I, I don't know why, but seriously, it looks very similar in its own way, even though it still can be identified as Call of Duty. But let's talk a little bit about the details of what Sledgehammer actually did. The 150 HP. This is interesting right here. I think this is actually a good fundamental for the game because it doesn't look like traditional 150 HP. Honestly, it doesn't even look like, you know, Cold War's dumbed down version of 150 HP. It looks more like 125. It's very quick. I've actually seen a lot of people compare it to World War II. And I think it is. I think it's around World War II's time to kill, maybe quite possibly a little bit longer. It's long enough that you can escape engagements, especially at long range. But at the same time, if you're up close and personal, gunfights aren't going to feel like they're lasting for two centuries. And if people decide to stack, you're not going to have to worry about that. It's not going to be a Black Ops 4 scenario or Black Ops Cold War scenario where if two or three people run up on you in close quarter engagements, you're kind of screwed. No, from what I've noticed, people get melted. They get melted, but at the same time, there's enough uh, uh, there's enough time in between engagements that you can feel like you're having a legitimate gunfight and you're not getting red screened right off the bat. So honestly, the time to kill feels phenomenal because of that. The movement, it doesn't seem too cracked out. I see people spamming the slide cancel all the time, but again, that's fine. I don't care what people do because at the end of the day, that doesn't really dictate your aim. If you have good enough aim, it doesn't matter how good a person's movement is, you could still probably go ahead and nail them up when it comes down to it. My problem was that the slide canceling maneuver was abused because it gave you back your tax sprint. So you had to do it. It's not something that was optional. It wasn't something that you did every so often. It was something that you had to do so you can get an advantage to get to positions faster. Not in here. You have your slide cancel. You have your B-hop. The B-hop doesn't look too excessive. It's not as fluent as others want it to be, but I like it this way. I don't want to be B-hopping across the map, flying from one end to the other, B-hopping nonstop, you know? I don't mind, you know, pausing, because it was never like that, you know? If you think back to the, the traditional Call of Duty games, like Call of Duty 4 through Black Ops 2, you B-hopped maybe once, and then you're pretty much, you know, you got bricks on your feet, and you have to wait to regain your momentum again. Maybe if you're lucky, you can get a second B-hop through there. It was never that crazy, so this is a perfect in-between. I think there's dolphin diving as well. The slide cancel, it is going to be used as a skill gap now instead of something that is abusive, which is always a good thing. And on top of all of this, the visual clutter is outstanding in this game. That is one thing that really stood out to me, is that when you shoot your gun, the clutter that is on your reticle or on your red dot is non-existent. Thank the heavens. In an arcade game, the last thing you want when you're engaging with people is a bunch of crap popping up on your screen so you can't see. You want a clear visual of who the target is so you can track them because the whole game is based on who can aim better, who can track better, you know, so on and so forth. You can't do that in Infinity Ward games. But not only can you ADS fast, not only can you move fast, run fast, strafe fast, but on top of that, they're adding way less visual clutter. I mean, it's hard for me to complain right now. Now, I know I'm going to get crap about it, but I really don't give a crap. You know, you, you know, truthfully, I can't give a crap. I always speak my mind on this channel, and this is the realistic view. At the end of the day, it's not worth $70 to $100. Honestly, I would say $30, bucks, $40 bucks tops. I would say $40 tops, this might be worth it. It's not worth a full-priced game because at the end of the day, it's still DLC. But at the same time, I can still acknowledge that what has been done is extraordinarily positive, and it's literally everything the community has asked for. To complain about this is just mind-boggling because there's nothing to complain about besides Activision still trying to rip us off. That is something to complain about. Yes, indeed, 1,010% Activision is trying to pull one over on us. But when it comes to gameplay, Sledgehammer literally listened. What else can I say? They did. Like I said, I was watching three hours. I was really trying to dissect it and see if it's anything that I could bring up. But I can't. I can't bring anything up. The movement, like I said, m gameplay was the biggest factor for me. They could show any trailer they wanted. They could have done anything in the world. But the only thing that matters to me is how the game looks like it runs when it comes to gameplay mechanics. Is it going to be a skill gap? Are you going to be able to improve in the game and feel like you can actually stand out in the crowd by learning how to play? And from what I see, yes. Of course, that opinion might change when I get hands-on. And of course, that opinion might change if Sledgehammer decides to change anything. But in its current state, from what I saw at Call of Duty Next, which from you know the sounds of it, that's their current plans of what they want the game to be like, then yes, these are very positive changes. Everything the community has wanted has been resolved. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, go down in the comments section and leave your opinions down below on how you feel about Call of Duty Next, all this information with Modern Warfare 3. Again, I'm not really too overhyped about it. I'm just pleasantly surprised and impressed that Sledgehammer was willing to listen to the community. 
there's nothing really crazy about it being seventy two hundred dollars. You know, I watched the Warzone event. It's whatever. It's Warzone still. Zombies actually looked a little decent. But the thing is, is that I'm not really that big of a zombies guy. So my opinion on that isn't really the best. You know, I, I come from a very, very, very noob mindset. So when I think of zombies, I just think of something to casually hop on when I'm tired. You know, I don't really want to think too much. And it looks like it's a blast to play with a bunch of friends. Just an open world zombie, you know, obviously outbreak, maybe mixed with a little DMZ, just more enhanced. They're trying to build on top of it. I'm not really expecting too much because obviously Treyarch is still working on their own game, so they can't go all out here. But if it's something to hold me over, it's something to hold me over. And if it's something that can hold other zombies players over, that's fantastic too. Because, you know, Modern Warfare 2, you guys didn't get anything with zombies, so that kind of sucked. But my main focus has always been multiplayer. That's just my bread and butter when it comes to COD. I love that stuff. And honestly, a lot of these changes have been positive. They have been positive. I'm just curious how they're going to hold out. I'm curious if it's still going to be the same when I can get my hands on. And when I can critique it on my own you know, beta on my PC, then we'll really see if this game is going to stand up and be good competition or if it's just going to flop and X Defiant will take the crown. But as always, thank you for tuning in. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a dislike if you hated it. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell if you want to be notified for more content just like this. We post daily here at 8 in the morning Eastern time. Anything between commentaries, live gameplays, comparisons, and, you know, whatever you want, you got it on this channel. And last but not least, we will be streaming a little bit more. Obviously not the beta because we don't play on PlayStation. But if you guys still want to catch some good vibes and hang out with me and the community, you can find the link to my kick channel down in the description of this video, along with all my other socials like Twitter, Discord, all of the above. But as always, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.